Hello, I think this should be up now. Just jumping on the live chat to make sure that uh, everything's working. Bear with me just a second, please. Okay, all looks good. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, it's been a little bit of a break since the uh, previous Axe Corner, but we're now back again. And this week we'll be taking a look at the uh, Pi Track and Pi Sense. So these two boards recently joined the uh, family of PyCom devices. They were uh, they are shields to amplify and add value to the current offering of our modules. So they include things like temperature sensor, accelerometers, GPS, all the kind of things to bring your project to life. The real intention behind these shields is to actually amplify all of the, uh, the PyCom offering. So whether you're doing projects that require uh, environment sensing or asset tracking, anything that can be amplified by sensing the environment, these shields are there to do it. So I'm gonna jump into just talking a little bit about the hardware and then we'll get into actually updating them how to install the firmware correctly, finding the libraries for them, and then some examples as well. So, we've got the two devices here. I'll start having, by having a look at the Pi Sense. So, zoom the camera in a little bit and take the screen down. Okay, let's get that focus. Perfect. And make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is Pi Sense. PySense is the environment sensing uh, uh, expansion board, expansion shield. And what this does is uh, it allows you to access a temperature sensor, light sensor, humidity sensor, pressure sensor, accelerometer, uh, and uh, external button as well. So we'll have a look at the device itself. So you can see down here, you've got the barometer uh, and another temperature sensor. There's actually two temperature sensors with this device. You've got the um, uh, light sensor here as well. Accelerometer is on top. You've got your pressable button, so this is uh, an external input. So similar to like the expansion board, you can use this for your programs, or you can use it to wake the board up from deep sleep. Um, there's a number of different configurations you can set it up for. Um, and on the board as well, you can use it to send a low pi into deep sleep. So as with the expansion board, the low pi, for example, in this case, plugs directly in, so align the uh, LED above the micro USB slot, and then they clip together, and they should make a, a reassuring click and glide flush with the uh, the board itself. So that's the complete package. You've got low pi plugged into a pi sense, and then on the bottom you've got the micro USB port, and also a uh, battery header for using external battery. So you can not only put a battery in, you can also monitor the battery's voltage. So for example, when you have something deployed in the real world, you can actually see what's going on, whether it's running out of battery or how long you can estimate your battery to last for. Um, again, all these, these factors depend on what you're doing and how long the device is sleeping for. But uh, we've been running an example in the office now for two and a half weeks with very little uh, drain on the battery, doing temperature updates every hour. So it's doing its job fantastically. Okay, so that's the Pi Sense. Uh, you also have some expansion headers for plugging in external sensors, interrupts, and uh, powering ground. The reference documentation for the pinouts are actually online as well. I'll jump into those in just a minute. Um, but you can find them all listed on our documentation website. So that's PySense. Uh, this is PyTrack. PyTrack is uh, very similar to PySense, but you've got a number of different extra features. So rather than having all of the uh, sensors that you do on the Pi Sense. Instead of the Pi Track, you have a GPS and accelerometer. And what you might use this for is tracking goods, tracking vehicles, tracking animals. Uh, we've got a number of projects doing interesting things with tracking uh, cattle, um, tracking goods, packages, any sort of devices that need um, updating on their location, whether they're in your city, whether they're delivered, you name it. Um, Pi, Tra Pi Track has a use case for those, uh, those examples. So. 
we've got a GPS down here. Um, GPS is packed with tons of features. There's loads of extra stuff that we, uh, we're we still yet to implement with the GPS, so those will be coming in, this, in the future. Uh, it's got an onboard antenna, so you don't have to worry about an external antenna that's already built in for you. And then again, you've got your external headers, you've got your micro USB port, battery charger, and uh, battery uh, voltage measure as well. So you can double check battery voltage from there too. Um, okay, so again, the same thing as before, the Pi, uh, Pi track takes the low Pi directly on top, so it clips in, USB above the LED, snaps into place, and then you have it. The two boards are connected. So I'm going to quickly jump into our documentation to show you where you can find more information about these boards. And um, this way, if you want to check out what I'm talking about, as I'm as I'm talking about it, you can follow along as well. So just give me a second. And I will open up my web browser. Okay, and let me just scale it quick. Okay, so here you can see I have my web browser open, and we're actually in a new documentation. So this is the first time we've actually shown off the documentation since uh, we've updated it and uh, moved over to a new platform. Still at the same location, so docs.pycom.io. You can find everything you need right there. Um, we moved over to this new this new tooling for a number of different reasons. One of the primary reasons is now that actually you can contribute back to it. So if you do see mistakes, if you see anything that needs changing or something's confusing, you can actually mouse over and you'll see a little plus symbol pop up on the side. You can click that. Uh, it'll highlight the uh, section of text that you're concerned about and then you can start typing. So if I were to say, uh, this is the introduction, um, and then I go to post, it'll actually prompt me to go through GitHub, sign in, and then it will create uh, an issue around that block of text. So then when I go later on to, um, to see if there's any anything outstanding on the documentation, I can see whether you've made some suggestions or you've made changes, and I can go from there to edit and uh, adjust. Um, and then the other, other nice feature is the searching has been amplified. So if you wanted to, for example, search for, let's do a pie track, uh, it's now happens live in your, uh, your web page and happens instantly uh, as soon as you start typing. So as you can see, we've uh, got all of our search tabs directly on screen without having to tab, change pages, and this just means you can navigate much, much faster. So let's jump into PyTrack whilst we've got it here in front of us. Okay, so back into PySense PyTrack. Um, so PyTrack, as I said, is a GPS-enabled board. You've got a GPS accelerometer, and then there's a number of different libraries for actually accessing these uh, features as well. So you can check the documentation out for more specifics about what you can retrieve from the uh, specific libraries. Right now, the GPS is just producing uh, the longitude and latitude. We will be releasing an update for it shortly to introduce um, getting the data from the velocity and also um, some other features like time zone, um, as well as um, other features that are specifically available with that GPS that haven't been enabled in the library yet. Um, one of the things that we do is as we uh, progress with these devices, as we add more features, we'll take community input and uh, iterate on them. So the documentation contains the latest up-to-date information regarding the libraries. And if you want the libraries from the devices themselves as well, you can navigate to our PyCom-libraries uh, repository on GitHub, where we have all of the latest versions of the uh, MicroPython library for these devices. So there's two things to bear in mind. Uh, there's two, two elements of the firmware or software that runs on these boards, and you should keep in mind that they both need updating or checking for updates regularly. So one is the uh, MicroPython layer, which is what you'll be interacting with to actually use the sensors. And the other one is actually the firmware that runs on the device itself. So I'm going to go through the process of actually updating the board and showing you how that works, as well as showing you where the libraries are and how to install them. So let's wait for this page to load. Uh, I'm going to swap over to this PySense because I know I've already got the libraries downloaded. Put that back on screen. Okay. Um, let's make it a bit smaller. Okay, perfect. So here we've got PySense on, on screen. And uh, you should see in my web browser as well that we're now on the uh, PyCon Libraries GitHub repository. So you will see on here that there is a uh, folder for PyTrack. Uh, actually, sorry, in this case, PySense. So click on that, it'll take you into it. 
And uh, what you actually need from this folder is the lib file. So we've handily put a main.py example file for you to see how to access the, uh, the sensors on board. So let's have a quick look at that and see what, uh, what that looks like. It's pretty straightforward. The, uh, the two important files you need to remember are you definitely need the uh, pysense.py. That contains all of the uh, interfaces for the board itself. So this is talking to all of the sensors. So you need to have the pysense uh, library at the bare minimum. And then if you don't want to use all the sensors, you don't actually have to include them on your device. So it's worthwhile noting that uh, in this case, the uh, LIS2HH12 is the accelerometer. And if you want to just use the accelerometer, all we need to do is make sure that file is included with our library folder. We don't need to include everything with the board. Um, bearing in mind that there's pressure space and you want to have room for your own code, you should probably not uh, install and upload the additional libraries if you're not going to use them. So you can see how we go along. So we initiate the PySense class as an object. So we create the PY object. And then in this case, we're using all of the sensors. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, you, 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 if you're not using them, don't include them. But uh, here we're using the uh, pressure sensor. So we're creating a object called uh, MP, instantiating it with the object and telling it that we want to use it in altitude mode and um, passing in the PySense object as well. So the reason behind the PySense object is that the PySense board talks to the uh, Python devices, in this case, the low pi over um, I squared C. So the I squared C pins are initialized specifically on the PySense board itself on, I believe it is, let me have a quick check which pins that is. Um, on two specific pins. So if you don't specify that you're using the PySense library, then you're in, you could instantiate the, uh, the I squared C bus on the wrong pins, in which case you would never find your sensors. Okay, just one second, I'll wait for this to load. Um, I, I believe it's pins 9 and 10, but I may be incorrect, so I don't want to double check that before I uh, go ahead and confirm it. Let's have a look at this library file. So my internet is always particularly slow when I'm live streaming. Okay, so highsense.py. You can see that we instantiate the Bus. Okay, oh, so I was wrong. So it's P22 and P21 for the I squared C bus. So that's why you need to specify you're using the PySense library, uh, as it includes the bunch of features to enable uh, one, the I squared C library to be used, and also for the deep sleep functionality as well. Um, so one of the features that these boards allow you to do is actually put the modules into deep sleep. And we've been testing this for the last two weeks using uh, a little test example we have in our beer fridge, uh, which is telling us when uh, our beer is too warm and we need to uh, change the temperature on the fridge. So that's now been running for two and a half weeks, basically consumed no battery life, uh, running on a Pi sense board. Okay, so what you want to do with these is you actually want to download uh, the library files. Uh, in this case, the easiest thing to really do is just download the entire Git repository and then you can find what you need later. Um, I'll just do this to show you. Okay, so if you go back to the main page, you can go to github.com slash pycom slash pycom dash libraries. Then if you go over to the green button that says clone or download, click on that. And this should then open up a little drop down. Although I think my page may be frozen. Okay, so it brings top down, and then you go to download zip, or you can clone it using uh, Git if you'd like as well. Yeah. But I'll just for now go through showing how to download the zip. So then save that zip to wherever you want, in this case my desktop. And just give it a second to finish downloading. Um, just give it a second to download. And then we'll jump into it as well. So actually, while we're at this download, I'll go have a look at something else as well. So as I said earlier, there's two sets of software that go on these boards. One is the MicroPython layer, and also then there's the firmware. So once you've downloaded your libraries, uh, you need to actually make sure your board's up to date to run these latest versions of the libraries as well. So if we go back to documentation, we can find a little section that says uh, updating firmware under the set category 4.1. So 4.1.2.1, updating firmware, head over to that. And then it'll tell you here, so the latest version of the firmware for the Python by track is version 0.0.4. And click on that to download it. So we want the PyTrack. Oh, sorry. We don't want PyTrack, we want PySense. Let's go back. 
Um, and I know this board isn't running the latest version, so this will all be the exact same process that uh, you have to go through to update your device as well. Okay, so install your uh, file. Let's get to save that. Okay, so to do this, you need to install a, uh, a tool called uh, DFU Utils, and uh, this basically allows you to do um, device firmware update mode updates to, to uh, pick devices, and the Pi sensors is one of these, so you'll need to install this tool to actually update the firmware. Um, we will be updating these instructions to include for Windows as well. Right now we're supporting Mac OS and Linux, and um, there may be device util tools for Windows, but we need to include those, so uh, they'll be coming very, very soon. Okay, so now that we've got those two sets of uh, firmware and software installed, or sorry, downloaded, let's go ahead and install them. So what you need to do first is uh, take a micro USB cable, in this case just a standard micro USB, and plug it into your laptop or computer. Right, yeah, okay. So before you plug it in, what you need to do is a procedure you need to follow to actually put the board into DFU mode. So I'm gonna open up my terminal quickly and then show you how this is done. So let me just add my terminal. Let's make that a bit smaller. Okay. So let me just take a tab and then I'll show you how this works. Okay, let me make the text a bit bigger. Check see if there's any comments going on at the moment. Make sure we're all up to date with everything. Okay, nothing in the live chat. So let's go ahead and update this board. So if you go to the documentation, you can see the instructions here. So we need to type DFU uh, util. I've already got this installed, so I'm going to assume that you can go through the installation procedure, uh, and this will open up the specific terminal program. In this case, let's navigate to where we downloaded our file. So if we go to the desktop, so desktop, check that it's there. Uh, where we can, yes, okay, we got it here. Cool, so if we do now um, dfu util dash d and then d Um, what is this file called? File sense. Okay, so the procedure you need to follow with this is you actually need to hold down. So if you have a quick look at my, um, bring my hover cam up further so it's on top. You see what I'm doing? Uh, hover cam. Okay, make that a bit bigger. So you'll see what I'm doing here. I have my Pi sense. What I need to do is I need to press and hold the button, which is just here, whilst I'm plugging it into my PC and then run my command. So what this does is it puts it into DFU mode, press and hold, plug in the USB, and then run my command. Okay, so I think I may have been too slow there. If you have a couple of seconds to do it, so we'll try it again. So press and hold the button, plug it in, run the command, and a bit fiddly sometimes. Give it another go. There we go. So that went through and updated correctly. So it does take a bit of trial and error sometimes to get it to work. Um, this is mainly because the tool, I think, searches very quickly for uh, the device in DFU mode, and sometimes misses it. Um, we're going to be at a later integrating this into our update tool, so this whole process will be a bit smoother, but this is what we have for the time being. 
the current tool is in the works, but it's going to take some time to uh, just verify and tweak how we're relumping all of our uh, update processes together. So let me reduce the sizes again so you can see what happens on screen. So you can see that's the should have a done message once it's been updated correctly. Okay, so this board should now be running the latest version of uh, the firmware. So what we can go ahead and do now is uh, let's plug in a low pipe and um, then let's upload some of our library to it. So clicked in, ready to go. Jump back into uh, to Atom. So we'll hide some of these. Hide Chrome back to Atom. Uh, let me open Atom up. Okay, so into Atom, file, uh, let's make a new project. So let's do add project folder. I'll just create this on my desktop and do an example. So desktop, new folder, I sense demo, fit. Okay, so what we can do here is if we open up my uh, finder or your file navigator in your case and I'm actually just going to drag and drop the files over so this is going to happen off screen but it'll be the same if you just open up into the directory so let's open up that folder we just downloaded and just one second okay so we extract that now what we want is the pi sense libraries, in this case we'll take these and we'll drag and drop them over to here. Okay, so you should see now from the window that we have uh, we have the pi sense demo folder open and we have a lib and main.py uh, files imported into here. So this is just a test example. And what we'll do here is we will just probably push the whole thing up to the board and see how it runs. So we've got a low pipe plugged in. Uh, we've got well, no, not not plugged in. It's connected to our shield, and we're going to plug it in. So this, in this case, you don't need to press the button to update the uh, MicroPython running on the board because this is actually running on the low pipe itself rather than the board itself, rather than the PySense. Plug it in. Uh, you should see that uh, the LED on the low pipe starts flashing. Yep. So you know it's working. Uh, I'm going to use the Pi Maker plugin for this because it's uh, easy to show how it works. So, get serial ports, you'll see a pop up as USB modem, copy to clipboard. You can go to product settings, uh, specify this in our product settings now, save that, try to connect again. Uh, so, we're now running, we are running somewhere on our board, and I'm just going to X out the code that's running on there and then go back to this folder that made up PY. And what I'm going to do is I've got some firmware, some software running on the board already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe it off and upload everything from scratch. So now that we're not running anything in our board and you've seen that we've rooted successfully into a oh, REPL, actually I think this is off screen at the moment. Let me make this a bit easier to see. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so that should now be on screen. Um, so what I did here is I just basically uh, boosted into the board, booted into an empty REPL, and uh, now ready to start pushing code up to it. Um, I realize one of the previous complaints is that this is too small to see on screen, so I need to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Let's have a doing that. Okay. So we've got the REPL on screen, and you can see what I'm doing here. Right, so now that we've got board connected, we'll go over to sync. So pressing sync, and it should tell us that it's syncing the project. Reading file status. Uh, now pushing all of our directory. Okay, that failed, so let's do a quick reboot and try that again. So it's working now. So I'm removing all of the old files that are on there and now uploading the new ones.
and then it should reboot once it's done this. Okay, so it's now booting back into it again. Okay, it looks like there's something wrong. That looks uh, changed. Um, Didn't pass it in a string. Okay, so that needs to go in as a string. Good to know that I need to update the uh, example code now. So I'll try that again. Have a look where this is coming up. All right, I'll have a check for this later. Let's leave that blank time being just use pressure mode. So, the good thing about these uh, live streams is I can work out where there's bugs as well in our libraries. So I'll fix that so once I drop off the stream. Let's get this going for the time being. As I said, we're making tweaks and changes to this library, so sometimes things are adjusted. Okay, there we go. So I'll take a quick look at the uh, pressure sensor in a bit and work out uh, why our example project's not working. Uh, but for the meantime, you can see that we ran everything else and it all printed out all the various temperature set readings. So temperature sensor is telling us it's 31 degrees. Um, so that's a little bit warm at the moment, but um, I think it's because it's sat next to my computer. We've got the community, which is coming out at 44. Uh, 914, which is about right for England at the moment. It's been pretty warm and uh, humid here at the moment. We've got the light sensor telling us that the two readings are 588 and 583. The interesting thing about the light sensor is there's actually two, two different types of sensors. One of them uh, is for visible light. The other one is for um, a slightly different wavelength. If you're interested in working out a bit more information about that, you can check out the documentations. We have the uh, spec sheets for those two um, different light sensors within the PySense. Um, you can use either one of them. They, the library spits out a tuple, and then you can either pick which, whether you want the visible light or the uh, other wavelength uh, light sensor. We then have the uh, acceleration from the accelerometer. So this is giving out the value in uh, Gs. And then there's some also values from the accelerometer that calculate the, uh, the roll, pitch, and yaw of the um, accelerometer as well. And then we have the get battery voltage from the uh, place itself as well. And you can see here that so it's currently using 4.8 volts, which is coming from USB. If you had it powered over battery, it would be uh, probably a like 3.7 if you're using a LiPo, depending on what type of battery you use, it will obviously give you specific voltage for that battery. And then bear in mind as well that you should only be giving it voltage that are uh, standard of the uh, voltage regulator. And again, you can find more information about this, its specifications on the documentation. Okay, um, so let me just show you one other feature. So the other important thing to remember is that this board also does support deep sleep. So we can, if I just jump into the REPL quickly and show you how the deep sleep works. So let's have a look at uh, from PySense import PySense. PY is equal to PySense. So we created a PySense object. So PY dot, uh, we can see the different available methods. So we want to do set up sleep. And let's set it sleep for, say, five seconds. Okay, so that's now configured. Let me do py dot go to sleep. And then what will happen now is when I do this, the board will actually disconnect because the uh, USB host feature turns off. So the whole board goes to sleep. So the board will disconnect, and then we'll be able to reconnect it to it in five seconds once the board is woken up again. 
Actually, let me put the LED on so you can see this as well. That's probably quite useful. Import icon, icon, uh, heart heat, substitute, false. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to set the LED to go off when it goes to sleep. You'll see it turn off as it's sleeping. Um, okay, so the LED's on. And then we do py go to sleep. So now the LED's turned off, the board you'll see is disconnected, and uh, the board has entirely gone to sleep, and it should wake up uh, shortly. So I think it may have woken up again now. It started flashing again. And if we try and connect it again, if we get connected again. So it went to sleep. Uh, the board then woke up after five seconds. The LED turned off, came back on again. And uh, now it should be booted up into just the main PY file. So that would have run. We probably missed all of the uh, print up and temperature sensors because it was doing that one during uh, the boot up procedure, which we caught late. Um, but yeah, so this process is very similar to the Pi track. So the whole, whole update process is exactly the same. So when you go ahead and you update the firmware on the board, same process. When you go ahead and update the libraries, same process. Some slightly different libraries, so you don't have all of these libraries, so you don't have the LTR, the MPL, PySense, the SI7, all of those are for the PySense. Uh, on the Pi jackets, you have the LIS, which is the accelerometer, and then you have the GPS as well, and then you have a different library called PyTrack. PyTrack and PySense are basically the same, they just have specific configurations for the various sensors on each different board. Um, yep, so... That's most of the information you need to know about these two devices for getting up and started with them. In a few weeks' time, when I do another Alex's Corner, I'll probably do an example showing you how to do a quick project for maybe like a um, tracking example using PyTrack, and maybe we'll look at hooking it up to Sigfox or LoRa and actually getting your data back from those two services. So it'll be like a start to finish. Here's a PyTrack plus LoPy connected to LoRa, retrieve your data via TTN, and then you can actually plot it on a graph using uh, a simple server that we'll set up. So we'll be doing some more of those projects at a later date, um, and then we may actually be able to jump into and show you how to do some of that through our new upcoming middleware platform called PyBytes, which is just being released for beta today. And um, although that's not ready for public release, that will be ready very, very soon, and you'll be able to start getting your devices connected and hooked up to that as well, and also be able to do GPS tracking and location tracking through that platform, in addition to also using like your own services through TTN or Sigfox or whatever you prefer. Okay, so let me just check see if there's any comments or questions before we head off. Uh, so we're being asked, can we use the Google Place API with PyTrack to get an exact location for a moving vehicle? So this, uh, I believe, are you referring to the Google Place API that uses Wi-Fi and the wireless SSIDs? Um, because if that's the case, you can do, but it's worth bearing in mind that if you're trying to track an exact location for a moving vehicle, then once you've done it, you'll be able to uh, to see you'll be able to see, you'll be you'll be seeing different SSIDs as you move the vehicle. So it might not be the best uh, intention for a up-to-date vehicle location. If you're trying to follow a vehicle real time, you probably want to use GPS. Um, but the the wireless SSIDs work perfectly fine when the device is stopped or you're looking for a point in time measurement rather than a continuously updating measurement. Also, it's worth bearing in mind that that does actually cost money to use that, um, that specific API. And we are offering that as a feature through our PyBytes platform. So if you wish to use that, you can hook a device up to PyBytes and access the uh, uh, Google uh, wireless location uh, tracking API as well. But you can also do it through GPS, as I said. Uh, another question, trying to get a PyTrack and LoPy working now. Uh, so that'd be great. Um, so it's a similar process. So I have, um, again, as I said, I've got a low-fi and a, sorry, a PySense and a PyTrack here. Um, currently have PyTracks that look slightly different, so I'm currently working on a project with one of them, so it has a temperature sensor attached to it, so it looks a bit funny, but this one I have here is a, uh, a fully updated version 2. Is there a specific problem that you're having with uh, updating PyTrack? It should be the same process as updating PySense. Let's see if we get uh, some response. Yeah, I'm in here as well in case you've got your sound muted. Well, 
we'll go ahead and update the uh, pie chart view as well if you'd like to see that. So I'll jump back into uh, my web browser, show you that quickly. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go and download the pie track firmware this time. Uh, so you just after an example on the uh, the pie track, you want to see a live example running on that. Okay, let me try and get that going. So it's worth bearing in mind that if you're okay, so are you having trouble actually getting the GPS location because that might be uh, an issue if you're inside. The GPS works best with direct line of sight with satellites. Um, in order to do that, you normally need to be outside or have good visibility to a window or some sort of line of sight up to with the satellites overhead. Um, okay, so you're saying you've got issues with the TCA network in LoRa. Let me just try to pinpoint this. So is the issue with LoRa or is it with the GPS? Ah, TCN, okay. Um, okay, so I I would jump into TTN example right now, but I haven't got any of that set up at the moment. Okay, um, right. Let me direct you to some examples of the TTN. These should be up to date. Are you talking about using the TTN as a node to a gateway that's not a Python device? If you're using a nano gateway, um, there's been some updates to how that works. If you're using it as a node up to a, an official TTN, Gateway, then we have some examples in our documentation for that. Let me try and find them for you. Uh, I will show you how this works. Ah, okay, can I use a TTN application? Right. Let me jump into my own TTN and show you how it works. TTN. Oh. I'll set up an uh, example TTN application and show you how, how it should be configured. Ah, okay, so you're registering as a gateway. So regarding the gateway, is this the gateway still connected because there were some changes to TTN how uh, you were supposed to register the gateways. I believe one of the issues that we've had recently is they changed it over to using, um, it's called legacy packet forwarder. So you need to change the configuration of the gateway to legacy packet forwarder to actually uh, to get the gateway work up. See if I've got an example of that now. Just bear with me a second. Okay, get ready to be fine. Um, did you use the example code from the documentation regarding the single channel uh, low-pi nodes? Because if you don't have your channels connected or configured correctly, then um, you might have issues actually getting it to work. Um, device node stuck in the lower connection. Okay, so this might be because of your um, 
code on the node side of the device. Are you using OTA A or using AVP connection types? Okay, so I'll answer this other question as well. So uh, the PyPyte service is currently in uh, pre-release. That's actually going live. Uh, it's either, been, either going live now already or will be in the next uh, few hours. Um, and then regarding the PyPy, the PyPy is coming very, very soon. It'll be in the next few months. Um, we've, had example, we've had test samples come through. Um, they've gone off to sequence for testing. Um, there's, uh, there's just some firmware on that side to be developed and finished. And um, then we'll wait for the. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm trying to like, jump between two questions here. Um, then we'll wait for that to be written, push to our devices, and uh, then the manufacturing run to start. So you can expect them to be coming very, very soon. Let me have a look at the node code for you. Flora uh, line. Okay, wait. Okay, it's shooting OTA. And did you follow the, uh, the example on the documentation for. Uh, Okay. No, no worries. I'm just trying to uh, make sure I can handle everyone's questions here. Yeah, so I, we've been hearing reports about um, the TCN having changed their uh, setup. And actually, this is something that I'm looking at doing at the moment. I, I did have a go at doing it uh, last Friday when I set up an example for one of our workshops that we're writing. Uh, that seemed to be fine, but I need to double check what's changed between how I did it uh, Friday versus what's, what's written in the documentation because I think, I think there's been some issues with TCN and they've changed stuff around. So let's have a quick look. Um, but yeah, the important thing to remember is that once you've got the gateway code running on the board on the device itself, you do need to use the um, specific code in the documentation for a single channel um, uh, LoRaWAN device. In this case, um, this is set up for the EU, um, but you need to use 868.1 uh, megahertz. And this is just due to regulation. We want to do it onto the first three channels um, at the same frequency, specifically for um, specifically for the low pi in uh, nano gateway mode. Um, but you're right; there's been some issues with TTN, so I'm going to check those out for you and make sure that uh, whatever's changed there and is uh, still functioning with our devices. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't used this, I would recommend using this. Uh, it's important to note that our gateways are single channel gateways, so they work perfectly fine with a number of our devices, but um, you have to specifically specify uh, which frequencies you're operating on. In this case, 868.1 megahertz and single channel. Um, but yeah, again, so Arnold, um, I will follow up in the forums. If you, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll try, I'll try to get something up again today for you, for example. Uh, I'll post it under getting started in the forums. You should see uh, some support there for the TTN stuff. And also uh, anyone else is having problems with uh, TTN setting up nano gateways. Uh, we'll try and get that resolved for you. Uh, but okay, I kind of got, got a little bit sidetracked from PySense by track. But um, next week, I would like to try and have a look at either PyBytes or doing a full example with uh, PyTrack PySense. And um, I will summarize uh, the contents of the next Alex's Corner uh, on the forms again, as I, as I usually do. I'll create a follow up post with the information and links from this video. And um, again, I'll give you the date and time for the next access corner. Um, fantastic. So again, if you do have any questions or queries, please do find the access corner week seven post in the forums and drop your questions below. I'll handle them there. Otherwise, um, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thanks.